Hello, Interior Sports fans. Joe Cook here in the Sports Seat for you this Saturday evening with your weekend sports. Maybe too many holiday leftovers for the Ice Dogs as they stumble after Christmas a bit with a loss to the Bismarck Bobcats last night. Fairbanks was up 2-1 going to the third after a Kyle Lee goal in the first and a Taylor Munson power play tally in the second. The Bobcats nailed three unanswered goals all in the third period for the 4-2 win. Both teams went 1-3 on the power play. Sanzlov Zakov had two goals for Bismarck and Tyler Dunnigan had two two assists. Why Eggy, he led the Ice Dogs with two assists, while Aaron Nelson made 30 saves on 32 shots, including a shutout third period. Both teams back on the ice today to wrap up this series. And last evening, the North Pole Patriots girls basketball team got their first win of the season. The Patriots played Klawak in their opener of the Clark Cochran Christmas Classic in Ketchikan. Say that five times fast for me. The North Pole girls team defeated Klawak 48-32 and led throughout this game. Willow Stewart, she came up big for the Patriots with a 19-point performance. Lindsley Dammel added 11 points. And Savannah Moisson, the soccer star, she chipped in with 8 points. It was the first win of the season for the first-year head coach, Mason Campbell. Also, the West Valley Wolfpack boys team, they were at the same tournament in K-High, and they opened against Seward. Seward gave the Wolfpack all they could handle in the first half. West Valley had an early 6-1 advantage, but Seward worked at it. They cut the small deficit and were able to match West Valley's playmaking. Sewer overcame the full court press by the Wolfpack and led 33-32 at halftime. West Valley kept on the pressure, though, and they started hitting some shots from the outside. The Wolfpack blew open the game, outscoring the Seahawks 26-9 in the third quarter. Their lead would balloon to 20 points as West Valley hit a number of trade balls. The Wolfpack win this game 74-57. Trayvon Bracker, he had a monster game with a game-high 35 points. Daniel Hornbuckle, he had 18 points all on three-pointers as the Wolfpack improved to 2-0 to start the year. Also in tournament basketball, the North Pole Patriots boys lost to the Diamond Lynx in their first game of the Capital City Classic in Juneau. 59-40 was the final. Ryan DeLore led North Pole with 13 points and 4 assists, while Khalil Stewart contributed 8 points and 11 rebounds in his debut. The Patriots faced Juno Douglas, the host team, this evening. The Latham girls team, also in Juno for the Classic, lost by just 2 points, 45-47 to Juno. The Malamutes brought their freshmen and sophomores and nearly came away with a win in this one. Today, they go up against Gig Harbor out of Washington State. And in Las Vegas, the Lathrop Boys basketball team, they haven't gotten a win yet in the Las Vegas Prep Championship. They dropped two games yesterday, one to Arroyo Grand, 62-51 in, in the nightcap host Las Vegas. They got a win 74-59 over the Malamutes. Lathrop is in the bronze bracket and that play starts today. Just five days until 2014 gets here, so we have time for another year in review sports story. Let's take a look back at a sport where men and his best friend worked together to conquer the vast distances on the hardened trails and the elements. The 2013 dog mushing moments. Let's go back to February. On the second month of the second day, the 30th Yukon Quest commenced. At the end of the grueling 1,000-mile race, Alan Moore strolled into Fairbanks. He was only 26 seconds away from winning the Yukon Quest last year, but this year, Alan Moore, he stands alone. Moore, the Two Rivers resident, beat out Hugh Neff, who led much of the race and was his closest competition by an hour and 16 minutes. Moore crushed the old record of nine days and 26 minutes by Hans Gott in 2010. Moore completed the quest in a record eight days, 19 hours, and 39 minutes. Moore and his wife, Ali Zirkel, who won the quest in 2000, are the first husband and wife to have won Yukon Quest titles. The third time was a charm for Moore, who was finally in the winner's circle. It feels, it feels great. You know, it's something you strive for all year long. It's kind of like a, you know, a basketball championship or a football championship. That's what you go for all year long. You're preparing for. Let's fast forward to March for the big one. The Open North American Championships on March 15th. It was about who could topple the man, the myth, the legend, Elgo Ellis, who won the last five ONACs and is a 12-time champion. This year, there was a new champion, Arlie Reynolds of Salsha. Reynolds, a veterinarian, won the race in three hours, 32 minutes and 50 seconds. It was his first title as well. He finished just three minutes ahead of Ken Shedzik from Michigan, while Ellis finished in third place. And then the Super Bowl of dog mushing, 2013 Iditarod, and it turned out to be a historic one. Mitch Seavey, with 10 dogs, won the Iditarod in 9 days, 7 hours, 39 minutes, and 56 seconds. Seavey, at the ripe age of 53, became the oldest musher to win the Iditarod. His son Dallas won it in 2012, and he was the youngest to ever win the legendary race at just 25 years old. Seems like the Seaveys know a thing or two about mushing. Ali Zirkel was runner-up for consecutive years, and Jeff King finished third. 
We'll see if mushing in 2014 can top what happened in 2013. We continue with another moment from 2013. Back in April, I had the opportunity to cover an event I've never heard about before in my life, the Arctic Man. I traveled to the Voodoo in the Hoodoo Mountains to experience a sporting event that's very unique, and it's right here in Alaska. Off the 28th Tesoro Arctic Man, a new division, the adaptive class for skiers who have no use of their legs. These athletes use their upper body strength as they swoop by sitting on one ski. Tyler Walker and Paul Thacker won the first adaptive class event. This was my first Arctic Man and I ran into another rookie, Kayla Fry, the UAA student who pulled Layla Crawley to a second place finish in women's ski. It's a good environment. The girls field's pretty small. We all know each other and making friends and yeah, we're here to win, but it's about having fun too. A lot of these skiers and snow machiners have been going up and down the beautiful Hoodoo Mountains for years and can't resist the event. Jonathan Huff, a fair banks and finish his ski in four minutes, 12 seconds for sixth place. Oh, it was great. You know, the just off first aid there, just lots of air coming in. Legs are burning. Just coming all the way down to the finish. Huff finished, but like the second hill called first aid, where a number have wiped out, the team of Matablo and Johnson, one of the contenders, did not finish. But this year's Arctic Man was also record setting. Nate Holland set a men's snowboard record, finishing in four minutes and 26 seconds, going as fast as 58 miles per hour. Holland wins back to back titles, which is especially sweet for him since he didn't finish two Arctic Man appearances. Just mental checkpoints in my mind were going by a little faster than they had in years past. So I was like, wow, this is this is feeling pretty good. Came across and felt like that was a really good time and felt like it was gonna be be a contender and it turns out it was. The man of the day was Tyler Acklestad. The Palmer native not only pulled Holland on his record setting snowboard run, but he and Marco Sullivan three peated the men's ski event. They did it in three minutes, 52 seconds, leading a fast field as three other teams finished under four minutes. Acklestad and Sullivan's three consecutive wins in the men's ski is an Arctic Man record. It's just a great day with awesome weather. The machine, you know, on my end, uh, that's kind of the big thing is getting the sled riding good and running good. And uh, it, was on, uh, it was on point today and uh, those guys did their job and I did mine. The beautiful scenery, enthusiastic fans and supporters, party atmosphere and the top level competition defined another tremendous year of the Arctic Man. From the Hoodoo Mountains, Joe Cook, Channel 11 Sports. And that'll do it for sports tonight. Thanks for rocking with me for a little while. For more KTVS Sports, just go to Twitter, watch us on YouTube, download our app, or you can visit webcenter11.com. Stay warm, Alaska. Your full with the forecast is coming up next, and we'll catch you next time.